Right, we're here at Davos and we have two really special guests with us who are doing a session together here at the World Economic Forum. Karan Johar, the head of Dharma Productions, but needs very little further introduction, as indeed uh, does Sharmino Ubechenoy, who's a documentary filmmaker from Pakistan. And you're doing a session together at the World Economic Forum. And I guess the first question that everyone at home is going to ask both of you is, how could you? How could we? Because artists how and filmmakers <laughs> have to collaborate. And I think, uh, I think that's a question that possibly if anybody asks and they won't understand the importance of collaboration in art or just kind of storytelling, whether it comes to a filmmaking or documentary or the kind of spreading the kind of awareness that I think Sharmin has done with her tremendous work. We are living though in an era of hyper-nationalism. And is that something that I'm going to ask both of you that question because I'm wondering whether that's causing a certain amount of concern with hyper-nationalism, with you know, the minute you're doing something, you're doing a film, you're trying something, getting a bunch of people coming on and attacking you. Is that causing concern? Is that leading to self-censorship? Well, there's a lot of uh, fear. There definitely is. I can't lie to you. As a filmmaker, I feel afraid. I feel afraid of sometimes, you know, giving my perspective, whether it's emotional, it's political, or it's religious, there definitely is a self-policing that's happening in my head. Then there is also a fear of censorship and then there's a fear of what's beyond anyone's control, which is what invariably lands up happening with me. Uh, I can't say that I'm not afraid. I don't want to be. I don't enjoy this feeling because I feel that I want to use a celluloid as a medium of expression. I want to be able to tell stories and I want to make an audience aware of my thoughts and ideologies. But unfortunately, I don't think I have to stick to kind of old-fashioned love sometimes. That's rather sad, right? That it's a pity. For a filmmaker, you've got to suddenly have a voice in your own head saying maybe but you, you know, shouldn't do uh, it. So even at the height of, of the Cold War between Russia and the United States, you had cultural diplomacy that took place. Artists and filmmakers and musicians were not generals and politicians. I mean, we're not meant to fight wars. We're about peace, love and happiness and coming together. And at the height... Are you sure? You've got Karan sitting next to you. Why don't you just slug him with something? <laughs> Hit him with your handbag or something. You know, with my hand. Just get it out. You know, I'll tell you something, it's our duty as, as, as sort of being the moral compass of what society should be like, the things that we should celebrate. We have to find a way to tell the stories we want to tell without censorship. I get what you're saying, but in Pakistan, I'm sometimes wondering that how is it working out for filmmakers like you? You suddenly don't have Bollywood. It's not being allowed. You're not allowed to be airing Indian screen, Indian movies see, anymore. The allowed word, does that help you or does that hurt see, you? See, as the a allowed word is very interesting because there's no overt ban on it. It's a self-imposed ban on, on, on uh, doing it. So it's not a government ban that's been placed. Look, the thing is that we've not had a film industry. We've relied on Bollywood for decades. And um, our cinemas have just started opening the multiplexes. And we rely on Indian films to have the footfall. Since Indian films have uh, gone off screen, the footfall has fallen more than 50%. So it affects us as filmmakers who make films but then expect people to come to the cinema as well to watch So you're them. saying it's not helping Pakistani filmmakers Absolutely to have Indian not films not be shown, it's all. hurting you? It is hurting us and I think now the Prime Minister of Pakistan has set up a special committee to look into this and, and we are going to hopefully reopen Indian cinema in Pakistan because with Indian cinema, Pakistani filmmakers will also be able to show their work and get new audiences into cinemas. All right, Karina, I know you were saying that, yes, there's that voice in the, in the back of your head, but it's not that you haven't dealt with sensitive subjects in the past, unrequited love, you've done adultery, you've done Muslim identity in the post 9-11 world, um, and, and you've been doing all of that. I mean, I know sometimes you crib that people don't take you seriously enough because you're judging dance shows, but uh, at the end of the day, you've done that, those sort of themes. Are you saying you would not do themes like that anymore? No, that's not true. I would definitely do that. But there will be a... What I was telling you, Vikram, is what upsets me is that why should I hold any, any stops back? Why should I hold back at all? But I find myself doing that. Yes, I've dabbled in whether it's sexuality or it's, you know, searching for your identity in, in the world of a misinterpreted religion uh, or also whether it's to do with, fact, with emotional facts like infidelity. Uh, I've always tried to push the envelope. The fact that I don't get credit for it is just purely my personality issue. Uh, but that's a separate You're issue. Things. No, it's a problem. Yeah. You, you've got too many things to do. No, it's not. I, I enjoy doing things that the regular expected filmmaker don't do. Yeah. Like you're not expected a filmmaker to start dancing on a reality show. You're but dancing, that's a separate thing. You're doing talk shows. You're yeah, so a I book. Mean, and in talk show, there's sexual innuendo. There's all kinds of things happening. You're, there's conversation happening in drawing rooms. It could either offend you or you could feel that it's progressive. If you look at it, it's how you look at it. Uh, no, I will not stop doing things that I believe that I feel the need to do. But yes, what upsets me and what saddens me more than upsets me is that I feel that there is a certain amount of self-censorship that I think restricts the outer boundaries of our creativity.
But you know, and you've written a column for NDTV.com about this also, about not having censorship and not, and there shouldn't be censorship. Is that coming from outside, or as she was saying in the in the in the film industry in Pakistan among film owners? Is it more that internal voice? So is there anybody, uh, the, the censor board of course has also been doing it, the censor board has come out and asked cuts in many films and there's been led to a ruckus. You know, I have it in the recent, I have to say, in the recent lot of films in the last year, year and a half, we as a company haven't combated any issues with the censor board at all actually. It's been, it's been very, it's been actually very fluid and it's been all good on that account. It's more the fear of what will happen at that weekend of your release where you are suddenly like, you know, like you almost know like, you know, you're, you don't know if you're, the film that you worked at for nearly two years will suddenly have an issue. Like I know for a fact My Name is Khan didn't release in the state of Maharashtra in its opening weekend. I know I faced that issue. I know I lost that audience. Perhaps I never gained it back. Uh, then I know that during uh, Edelai Mushkil there was the, the crisis that happened right before. I have FIRs that are always coming my way for anything that is ever said. I don't even want to tell you the kind of points that are sometimes raised and the legal matters that my office which has an entire legal department all ready before every release because you never know what's going to come your way so what happens is while you're running a conglomerate you're running a studio you are also creative and yet you are a commercial voice you're accountable to your company and what happens with your money and investments etc so there is this constant voice in your head that divides you at every point of time while I may be liberal and left-wing in so many approaches of my life there is also a businessman in me that and I have to honestly say this that curtails a lot of my decisions so there's a commercial, know, the, the, but in the, Pakistan, the, is there more of an overt voice which also know, comes in? The thing is that, like, look, we live in difficult countries, okay? So when you pick up an issue or when you push the boundary, there will be blowback. Whether it's for him or whether it's for me or whether for any of the artists that live in our uh, uh, thing. But obviously, we know that we have a voice. People listen to what we say. People follow us. That's why the blowback is even greater because they know what the impact of our voice is in the countries. And that, I think, is something that, that is worth thinking about as well. So in Pakistan, for example, I talk about very controversial things. There are very many people in Pakistan who think I shouldn't be talking about those things. And at the same time, as like Karan has, a lot of people who support what he does and what, you know, people like myself in Pakistan. And I think that we have to sometimes continue to find our inner voice and do the things that we want to do. What I think is also um, uh, important to know that Sharmin's work, which is tremendous, has also been uh, internationally accepted. And of course, her Academy Awards validate that. Uh, my work has been purely national, actually. It's not, I've not, my work hasn't traveled at all. You know, so that kind of makes my boundaries even more limited in terms of, like, I have to worry about the reactions within my country. And I have to because I live in my country, I'm proud of my country, and I need to do what is right for the ethos of my nation. Uh, her work has had such an impact now internationally that sometimes, I, you know, you, you know that you can push or tear the envelope because you have an audience that is accepting beyond the boundaries of your country. Yeah, so I the, mean, can, I, can I let me just take that thought forward? I mean, what would be the worst that would happen? Okay, yes, there are commercial issues. Somebody will ask for a boycott of a film. If you're making a film with Pakistani actors, as we've seen recently, you know, there'll be, a, there'll be an issue at the box office. But one thing which will happen, which perhaps we all need to just get used to, not just in India, not just in Pakistan, but all around the world, the trolling, the Twitter, all of that will happen. You were one of the people who really pushed Twitter in India and then you right. got off it just because of the sheer volume of abuse and trolling that you were encountering. And, you, and I, I remember you writing saying, why do I want to uh, expose myself? Vikram, to that doesn't bother me anymore. I've like, I have like a, I built like an armor of steel that can combat any amount of Twitter trolling. I wake up to abuse every morning and that's not a problem anymore. I've gone from anger to indifference to now complete amusement. It doesn't bother me. The trolling, the backlash, the criticism, every single day you receive that in abundance of to do with your personal life, your professional life, comments you make, the status you have in general work-wise or anything else. I've grown to kind of get used to and accustomed to all kinds of abuse. I'm almost kind of enjoying it now. Well, you know, I, enjoying I, the <laughs> abuse. <laughs> I, I don't mind the abuse, like the verbal abuse, of course, uh, uh, is something that I wake up to. Now when people say nice things, uh, it, I'm awkward with praise. Like I don't know how to handle it because I almost think that it's... Now I know what I'm going to... So Twitter trolls, now you know what you're going to do. You're going to really upset Karan Johar, start saying nice things yeah, about him. Yeah, but I really believe that could Let be the way forward out. for me. Karan, you're a wonderful <laughs> human being. You know, put Thank that you. out in uh, uh, And I truly am. <laughs> but yeah. I really feel like now when I, like I react to critique and criticism and the kind of abuse that comes my way, there are words I didn't even know existed, even if they're kind of, you know, if it's bad language. I didn't even know if people were so creative with their usage of bad language. But it's great to, to, you know, the thing is that we often think about the fact uh, that 
the stage, the many stages, as he's talked about, those are the same stages that I've gone through. You know, I mean, the kind of now I I, I don't even think about uh, what is said about me on Twitter. It doesn't affect me at all. Some mornings I wake up and I learn new things about myself yes. on social media. I didn't even know about my own. You get facts about yourself <laughs> which don't even exist, and then you'll have the people sending that to you for months and years. Yeah, there is a saying, Wikipedia. And did you really do this? And you're saying, well, you know. <laughs> But, but you know, you have to have a, a kind of an armor of steel. You can't let any of this because those who are abusing you on the internet have no identity. We have an identity. People know who we are. We're not hiding behind some fake name, some fake address, some fake things. I mean, all you know, it's one guy with a hundred passwords logging in to abuse one person. So, you know, you cannot uh, let that face you. And that cannot entirely be untrue. Exactly. Now, but Final Vidram, I have to say yeah. just one thing, just one thing, I'm in the show business and the one thing that will bother me the most is indifference. And I, I mean, hate me, love me, I beg of you, don't be indifferent to me. That would upset me the most. I think that's a valid point. If nobody would ever react to I really that feel you said, like I, 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 would, I, would, I feed off their, their worry and their concern because if they were indifferent to me, that would shatter me completely. So, moral of the story, send him lots and lots of messages right now. And if you really want to bug him, make them nice messages. That's yeah. what you've got to do. That would really upset me. Yeah, will, that's really good upset It would just worsen my day. Last question to both of you. It's, you, know, you, you said that we live in, in sometimes in difficult countries when it comes to this sort of... Uh, but it's not only a Pakistan issue and it's certainly not only an India issue. This might be a trend that we are seeing around the world. Look what's happening in the United States. Of course. Where you're having somebody who's taking over right now as a president of the United States who days before his inauguration is spending a lot of his time attacking Saturday Night Live for what they might be doing in a comedy show about or it. Or Meryl Streep. Or Meryl Streep. So maybe these are the times that we're heading for. And it's going to make, make creative people's job that much more difficult. Yes. Not all around the world. But this is the time then to speak up. This is the time to speak up. This is not the time to be quiet and hope that things are just going to change miraculously. No, if you do not agree with something and don't like how the world is turning, then you should speak up and speak out. I mean, I am not one of those people. I mean, yesterday at the opening plenary, this is what I said. This is not the time to be quiet. If the world is going in a direction that you do not agree with, then you better make yourself count it to make sure that future generations don't turn around and say, what the hell did you do? Why were you silent when the world was changing? That's a very good point. Do you agree with that? I agree with speaking out and I do think that you have to have a perspective and you know, a point of view. But I'm also of the opinion sometimes that I believe that a lo loud noise need not be as loud as it needs to be. Even sometimes we're in times where a whisper will be heard because there is so much acceptance even to that whisper. So when I mean whisper, I, you know, it's symbolic for subtlety. Sometimes nuance and subtlety where it comes to the arts. Uh, I think that you can make your point and you can do it in a nuanced manner. You don't need to scream it out loud because people I think get completely defensive when that happens. I think when you kind of layer your creativity with a messaging, I think that somehow connects much more. Karan Johan, thank, thank you so thank much you. for joining us on NDTV. Thank you.